everybody. Welcome back to Ordinary Adventures. Today we're at Universal Studios in Hollywood and we're going on the VIP tour. Last time I got to go on it, Kitra was in a wheelchair. So this time she's gonna come along for the ride. We're gonna get her experience and also things have changed. Super Nintendo World has opened up, things are different. We're gonna see how it has changed and have some fun. How about you come along with us? On this adventure. Universal VIP tour is complimentary valet parking and the entrance is right to the right of the main gate. You get a poncho for the water rides or if it's raining, you get your lanyard that says VIP tour which also works as an ex unlimited express pass. I am just so excited because I couldn't come on the VIP tour last year because I had a broken ankle and I couldn't walk and I'm just so thankful that Universal invited us out again because I was like very jealous that I didn't get to go last time. These give you unlimited express access to all the rides today with or without the tour guide. Here are two ponchos for Jurassic World, our water ride. Keep you a little bit drier than you would be otherwise. Do you know why Snoop Dogg wears a rain poncho? Why? For drizzle. What are you missing? <laughs> <laughs> no one's seeing the, the, the knees going up. Oh yeah, they, yeah they, that adds to the joke, right? <laughs> We arrived at nine for the tour and you go up to the second floor where they're gonna have a continental breakfast. The whole place makes you feel so special. This is decorated with all sorts of behind the scenes photographs from Universal's classics. They actually have some awards on display, like they have an Emmy from the office. They even have an Oscar. As for the food, they have coffee that you can brew fresh. There's a bunch of like croissant sandwiches that look and taste it actually pretty good. And they also have some more healthy options like eggs, and fruit if you're looking for that. I feel so special sitting up here. This is so cool. Whenever we walk through the gates here, I look up and I see all the people there and I'm like, one day, that's gonna be me. Today's that day. I just found out that they get, you get free bottled water too. How fun. Morning. Welcome to our VIP experience. I'm Chris. I'm Ursula. Okay, now together we're gonna take you through the biggest movie studio there is. It's the oldest movie studio in Hollywood and also the biggest, four times the size of the next largest studio. After that, we're gonna hit the theme park. It's gonna be so we're fun. Love Rudy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She's the good Ursula. I am. I mean, sometimes, sometimes. Do you know how many tickles it takes to make her laugh? Ten tickles. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. I'm sorry. So excited. My dream is to walk on the Back of the Future courthouse square. It's happening. Is it happening? It. Oh no, fake news. I don't know. Maybe. Yes. We're gonna we're gonna tell Chris and Ursula because I feel like our wish will come to fruition. We're I, hope so. I hope so. I hope so. This is the area where we'll be touring. And we have our own vehicle waiting for us right down this escalator. It's a little bit nicer than normal tram, right? Yeah, I totally forgot that we don't go on the normal trams when we get our own little private trolley. It's very cool. The VIP experience is the way to do this. It is a way to get just about everything in the theme park in, and also, it's a much more elaborate way to see the movie studio. We still use those sets to this day. So as a matter of fact, the same archways Frankenstein's monster had been chased through, Princess Diaries film there, it was Genovia, uh, also used in Pirates of the Caribbean. And by the way, our theme park, which has been around since the mid-1960s, the tour has been here since 1964. We've been a movie company since 1912. Officially, we're the oldest movie studio still making films. We're not the first ever, but we're the oldest still in business. Over on your left-hand side is a parking structure for movie executives. And that's it, it's a parking structure. However, on CSI, about 105 murders were discovered in that parking structure. So yes, yeah, setting, lighting, camera equipment, anywhere and everywhere, sometimes on the fly. In terms of what we get to see on the back lot, that changes because it is a real production facility. And so access to certain sets will be different. So you may be here one day and see certain sets, and you may come back a week or two later and see something that you didn't see in the past. So coming up on your right, your first opportunity to see the back lot. What looks like brick, stone, and metal is plastic, fiberglass, and wood. We have done the Universal Tram Tour 
dozens, hundreds of times, but this is the first time that we've actually gotten to get out and walk around the back lot. I'm so excited to be here. Around since the late 40s, early 1950s, we have older sets than that as well. And only subtle changes in terms of its structure. It's the outside that we change often. How about Home Alone 2? Macaulay Culkin chucks all kinds of things down onto the two sticky bandits right in that area. Now, a lot of Home Alone 2, which was done by 20th Century Fox, was shot in New York City. So you have to mix and match those scenes, scenes that were shot on location with scenes here. So we don't want the audience to know the difference. And generally you don't, especially when they do a really good job. Elvis Presley wrapped up his movie career on the street, shooting his last film here. Lady Sings the Blues with Diana Ross. This was Baltimore. Uh, in The Sting, Chicago, 1936. Gone Girl with Ben Affleck. These are the brownstones they're selling. The Mindy Project with Mindy Kaling shot here as well. Tons of commercials, music videos, Michael Jackson's Black or White, Remember the Time, oh, just to name a few, right here in these brownstones. Let's get a little closer. Bruce Almighty, Jim Carrey is carrying his dog outside. He's walking out of the uh, brownstone right over in this area, and there's a little patch of grass, and he lets the dog go to the bathroom on that patch of grass. It was literally just a piece of sod they would lay on the, uh, on the concrete. And if you want to gently, because your hand might go through some of this stuff, feel the material here. These are all props. A prop is anything that's generally not nailed to the set. And we have a huge prop warehouse that we hope to explore a little bit later on as well. Most of these sets are facades and shells. There's nothing inside of them. Interiors would be done on the front lot in the south stage. We have street lamps that get changed often. Changed due to the setting, due to the time as well. When uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula was shot in this area, this had to look like London during the 1890s. When Disney shot Dick Tracy, everything was painted blue and red and green and yellow. Lady Gaga's uh, a video, Edge of Glory, shot here. I'll show you the fire escape. She kind of runs out in it. Every type of music you can ever imagine, music video shot in this area. Come a little closer, you can see where some of the paint might be peeling away. So that might be fine if you want it to look old and distressed, but maybe you want it to look brand new. So the production teams will come in and they'll just replace all of this and make it look nice and new. You're telling me this isn't real? This is crazy. <laughs> Our tour guide is encouraging us to tap things because literally everything back here is fake. Tap, yeah, so tap, we're just, we're tapping things. Tap things. <laughs> I'm real though, right? You're telling me that movie magic is fake? <laughs> it's real to me. It's real to me. Are we yes. going to go to the courthouse square? Maybe. Yeah. Oh my god! So you're telling me there's a chance. There's a chance. Go. Okay. Trying to talk my way. Into Those are the happen. studio guys right there. So I just had a word with them and uh, they were shooting something that they want us to avoid okay. yesterday. Okay. So let me see what I can do. It's been my lifelong dream. I, I'm, listen, if I can pull it out, I'm gonna pull it out. This is, this is why it's good to have a good relationship with the movie studio and the television guys, because he's right over there on his phone. I just talked to him. Let me see what I can do. Thank you, Chris. Probably our most utilized street on the back lot. You're gonna see Gotham City from some of the Batman films. You'll see New York from some of the Spider-Man movies. You'll see London from Austin Powers, Chicago, San Francisco. Most of the Dirty Harry films done by Warner Brothers were shot on location in San Francisco. Unless you're doing a big shootout scene, car chase sequence, you're running into a building. So in the original Dirty Harry, Clint Eastwood is eating a hot dog in a diner. It's now a movie theater over here. There's a bank straight forward and to your left-hand side. It is being robbed. The bank robber is then wounded. And Clint Eastwood as Dirty Harry walks up to him while a cab and another car have crashed into a fire hydrant. Water's pouring everywhere. He's walking diagonally right across the street, right up to the bank robber, and aimed a 44 magnum at his head. He goes, do you feel lucky? You feel, do you feel lucky, punk? That scene was shot right there. Well, currently, the city of San Francisco has out this really incredible picture book of film locations from movies that were done in San Francisco, like Mrs. Doubtfire, Star Trek IV, well, somebody didn't do a lot of research because on the cover of that book is the scene from Dirty Harry that was shot right here. So I, I'm sure they're That's driving funny. it around San Francisco looking at that. It's great to see period pieces here like that or like Captain America, the first Avenger, where this is the 1940s because you have vintage cars, wartime posters, mailboxes out here. Looks amazing. Where it becomes difficult is when you hit a modern building like that one over there, which looks a lot like Oscorp. So I know you're going to Google that and say Oscorp was this giant skyscraper well yeah 
it is a computer animated one, but when you're doing close-ups with the actors, you'll take a building just like that and then computer animate the rest. But we have a couple of practical sets as well where you can film inside. Or maybe you put the camera inside and you're filming what's going on on the outside. Now where it becomes a problem, sound. The sound's not great, or at least it's better inside of a sound stage where you have padded walls and padded floors. So you might have to re-record a lot of sound that would be initially uh, shot inside. This next area was built in 1947 for a film that uh, was released a year later that most people may not even remember. It was called An Act of Murder with uh, Frederick March. It is the town square and the courthouse from the classic To Kill a Mockingbird, Bye Bye Birdie, one of the Psycho films, Inherit the Wind, the TV series Ghost Whisperer, it's the town in Gremlins, and back to the future it's, <laughs> it's happening <laughs> this is the it's movie. happening it's happening it's happening i don't know what's happening oh my god i am walking in courthouse square i am here right now this is real <laughs> I, i'm honestly speechless like i this was kind of like a mirage. It's like it was, it was just in my distance. It is really good. You almost never come here on the, the actual tram tour either. It's always filming. It's always being used for production. So it's like nine out of ten times they're bypassing it. Okay, we need to take a million photos here because we're never going to be allowed to walk around here ever again. <laughs> okay, let's get my photo in front of the yes. courthouse. Go back and watch Warner Brothers Gremlins. Artificial snow everywhere. This was a, uh, a, a wintry Christmas time sequence they had to completely revamp the area for back to the future because the first sequences that they shot here were the 1955 sequences so they had a grass park for the 1985 sequences the time in which that movie would take place they used a distressing method to make the town look a little bit older and this was a parking lot so that meant removing the greenery and covering this with concrete and for the years 2015 a pond in this area that wasn't computer animation. They really dug a pond out, and it was here Dang. for quite a while. And they left it here and paid a holding fee to keep it this way until the film was released, just in case they'd have to go back and reshoot it. This is awesome. So cool. This was changed when Paramount did a TV series called Ghost Whisperer. They were gonna shoot here for five seasons, and they didn't want you at home recognizing this from any of the other productions. So they said, let's disguise it. We'll cover up the columns and make a new front. We'll build the stairs out over the roadway. And then when we're done, we'll take it all down. So when they completed, we asked them to leave it there because we'll get more use out of it now that it's not familiar. But can you see the, the original column? Any type of production, private parties, they just did a big private party here, as a matter of fact. Uh, we'll do uh, special events. People have been married in this area oh, as well. Wow. What? How know, much like, does that cost? I was just going to say, say I don't know what that crazy. costs, but it's probably not cheap. If you don't know this, Back to the Future is my favorite film of all time. I always, when I get on the tram tour, I always hope that we're going to get over here, but usually it doesn't come here because there's been so much production happening. Whenever there's production, they skip this part. I've always dreamed walking around here. Now you get to walk around in the back here. Okay. It's so hey guys, cool. Marty, we got to go back. Okay. Let's <laughs> back, head back to the future. <laughs> You've got to come back with me. Back to the future. <laughs> I wanted to walk out here so you can see our monster mural painted by graffiti artist Tristan Eaton. And he took some of the main monsters and uh, we'd given him artwork, we'd give him all kinds of ideas, and this was his concept. Did all of this by himself with spray paint. Two thumbs up, way up. <laughs> Peter? Yes. Why did King Kong climb to the top of the Empire State Building? Why, Chris? He had a plane to catch. <laughs> <laughs> Strike three, you have one joke left. Okay, oh, 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 oh. choose wisely. So we're gonna take you through our collection of picture cars. They will be on your left, but Flintstones. You guys remember the Flintstones? They have to use their feet to make the cars move? Well, of course, that's not how they work. They were actually being pulled off camera by a different vehicle. Any fans of Harry Potter? Okay, the Ford Anglia from Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, they use 17 of those. 
right here we have, of course, from the Fast and Furious franchise. Yeah. From the Lost World of Jurassic Park, this is a great example of product placements. The commercial Mercedes-Benz actually paid the Lost World of Jurassic Park to have their SUV. You guys, the dinosaurs are gone. We have dinosaurs, they're not here. I'm not really sure where they are. We're just gonna keep moving forward. We're gonna hope for the best because they're definitely not here. Oh, no, dinosaurs! Oh. And guess what? We're going back because I dropped my phone. I am so sorry. You know who are. Pretty toxic. Pretty toxic. Pretty toxic. Pretty toxic. There's gonna be a lot of water. Just kidding. <laughs> Now, of course, we have water, the rain, the main element, and then you just light the water from the, the back, and it's going to look pretty cool on screen. Oh, I forgot to tell you, it's my first day. I don't know how to turn it off. You guys are going to get soaking wet. There's so much water coming your way. Watch out. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> <laughs> We're gonna head inside our prop warehouse, just like our studio, it is a rental facility. Anyone can rent out our props. Disney, Fox, Paramount, Sony. If you guys wanna throw a party, guess what? It's open to the public. So you can come here, you get a pass, you rent out your props. You have to bring your truck though. You have to bring your truck. So this building, again, the Ethan Head building, named after a very fam famous costume designer because the fourth floor, that's our costume department. That is not open to the public. That you have to be either filming a commercial, a movie, or a TV show. But props, three floors full of props. We'll get to walk around the first floor, which is where we have the larger items. A few moments later. So we just got to go inside of the prop warehouse and we couldn't film or take any photos or anything. This is amazing how much stuff is in there. There's literally one of everything that you could imagine. They would have like chairs and there'd be a hold tag on the chair and it's for, one of them was for Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. Apparently they're remaking that, I didn't even know that. But breaking news. Breaking news. <laughs> so we're walking around Little Europe, which has been used for some of the classic Monsters movies. It's been used for Good Place, Pirates of the Caribbean. It's funny because usually the, the tram tour just goes through here and it just came through and I was like waving at the tram tour. Like they're like, wave, they'll think you're a celebrity. And I was waving. <laughs> I and, love that. And then someone was like, oh my God, Ordinary Adventures. Oh, that's great. They're like, what are they doing there? A <laughs> hundred years ago, 1923. Hey. <laughs> so every major studio has set like ours. So this was our European set. Nowadays, movies do film all over the world, but you cannot blow up a car in Vatican City. So you film in Europe, but when you need to blow up a car in Vatican City, you do it right here. so cool actually being in the good place. Little do they know that I'm not actually supposed to be here, but don't tell anyone. Just in case you're wondering, even the flowers are fake here. <laughs> I mean, Brad Pitt was here. Definitely, yeah, but... If you look right there in the window, you'll see it says Brad Pitt was here. Chris, uh, did hey, you do uh, that? Take a look at the monitor yeah. right above. Les is like the mayor in that movie. Shark attack or not, we're going there, right? All right. Now, he could be okay. Okay, look on your right. On your right, Arch <laughs> He's helping that woman to, his, to her car. Hopefully he's gentle. The good thing is he didn't see us until now. Les, you may not want to stay here. Les, take off. That is a real 747. It's not a real crash, however. This was purchased by Paramount and DreamWorks for a film called War of the World. Steven Spielberg had an idea of a 747 crashing in the middle of a neighborhood. They purchased this 
from an airplane graveyard in the desert, purchase price around $60,000. The real cost was getting it here, nearly a quarter of a million dollars on flatbed trucks. Now after that, the uh, production team had about $500,000 in the budget to figure out what to do with it. So they called us and they said, you know, we're gonna start the cleanup tomorrow. And we said, you know what, leave it there. Stay with me. And we're not gonna go into the tram route on this one, but we can take a bunch of photos. All right, guys, come on in. Get to go through the back door. This is cool. The set from Nope is very impressive, but it's even more impressive getting to walk through it and seeing all the little details from the signage to even like the juke jangle coins, which I guess you can put into the well. What happens when you put it into the well? Do you hear the noises? Yeah, it's kind of scary. It's scarier when you're not on the tram walking around here yeah. with the noises. Definitely. And I am obviously Nope's number one fan because this is my favorite sweatshirt. This is cool to be walking the back so here. These are the we got to walk sets. through it one time before at Halloween Horror Nights, but they didn't really let you stop. So we just get to like hang out here for a little bit. <laughs> it is so much scary when they start playing the, the noises. Max, do you think they serve alcohol here? I don't, because I think everybody's a minor. <laughs> what did you think of the VIP tram tour? It was so awesome. It lived up to all my expectations. We've been on that back lot so many times, and it's so cool to finally get off the tram and walk, be able to walk around all the sets. Our tour guides, Chris and Ursula, were so knowledgeable. They literally knew everything about everything and I feel like they give you way more information than the normal tour yeah so that was really cool and I love that like even the theme parky parts of it where the tram shuttle goes in the middle the exact perfect way to experience Fast and Furious yeah and they, like, and they like back up they're like hold on we're gonna do it again and they just back up the tram like multiple times I love that that was so much fun yeah it's awesome <laughs> how many catchers would you give the tram tour Five out of five. Next up for lunch, we stopped over at Moulin Rouge. They actually have a buffet that's only for VIP guests here. The food is so good. It is some of the best food I've ever had at Universal. I feel like they have something for everybody. And if you have any kind of dietary restriction, you could just talk to the chef and they'll make you something. But they have salads, they have meats, French fries, cheese. Yeah, they even got chicken tenders for the picky youngsters or, or for me. Or if you're like us, you just literally put everything possible onto one plate and then just eat it all at the same time. They even have desserts. They have a, yeah. a bunch of desserts and they all look good. And there's unlimited water, soda, lemonade in the corner. You can even charge your phone. And if you want to eat outside, you can even eat outside and like look over the valley. Yeah, and I think what I love about this is it's kind of like character dining. Like we met Doc Brown and now Dracula's in here. So they like take shifts. <laughs> Hello, time travelers, how are you? What are you doing here, Doc? Wait, what are you doing here? I'm, I'm trying to eat food. Oh, very good, keep your nutrients up. I'm gonna use every single one of you today. Uh, so what have we done so far today? Well, we went to the clock tower. I was expecting you to be there, and you, but you're in here. Of course, with, with research and building. You're telling me something's wrong with the clock tower. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, Biff is at it again. <laughs> All right, I'll do my best. I'll see what I can do. Luckily, time is on my side. I'm so full right now. I probably shouldn't have got one of everything. It's two o'clock and lunch is over and now we're gonna do some rides. And of course, with the VIP tour, you skip the entire line, go to the front of the line, Let's see how many rides we can do in the next few hours. Universal Studios has reopened the main plaza and they've put on display a bunch of the cars from Fast 10. They look pretty cool. Now we're making our way down to the lower lot and we're gonna go to Super Nintendo World. Last time when Peter did this VIP tour, Super Nintendo World wasn't open yet. 
And I believe right now, at the time of recording, the only way to get in the express lane on the Mario Kart ride is with the VIP tour. So this should be a lot of fun. We're about to enter the brand new Super Nintendo World. The reveal of Super Nintendo World might be one of my favorite things ever. We walk through the green pipe. When you get into that land, you are in the world and you won't see anything else but. It's definitely one of the best reveals I've ever seen. We obviously love Super Nintendo World and the only way to walk right in without a virtual queue is the having an express pass or the VIP tour. But the only way, like Kitcher said, to walk right onto the Mario Kart ride without waiting 60 minutes is this VIP tour. Flash this bad boy. We got straight to the front. <laughs> I never realized this before, but in Bowser's Castle, there's a painting of Bowser, and it's actually signed by Miyamoto, the creator of Mario. How cool is that? He, when he was here, he signed it. The posted wait time said 50 minutes, but we, we're basically walking straight on. Kitra? Yes. Do you know what uh, Mario's favorite bagel is? What is it? Sesame! <laughs> it's good. That's good. <laughs> we're about to go on Mario Kart. Our friend Chris is behind us. Who's gonna win? Yeah, who's gonna get the high score? I'm a little rusty. I think, I mean, he's saying him, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. What did Chris get? I think what we want to talk about is really how do you play the game? It's not who wins, who loses, who got the more points, who got less points. It's really about did you have fun? How many points did you get? 98. Clearly, I'm the Let's winner in the it. car. Here's the thing, though. I'm going to be honest with you. We're halfway through the game. I looked down. Peter only had 14 coins. So I'm like, I better stop playing just to help him out. That's, that's not true. That's not true at all. So not only do we get to skip the whole line for a Mario Kart, but if we come back later after the tour, we can skip the whole line again and again and again without the tour guide. And they're taking us into the back door of Bowser's Town right now. So who won in Bowser's Junior's Shadow Showdown? You did? I wasn't even trying. I don't want to break a that, sweat. That's what Chris I didn't said. want to get sweaty. That, 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 I was already sweaty. Any, anytime you lose, you can't say I wasn't trying. I mean, I'm just saying, if I was trying, I would have won, but I wasn't trying. Kitra told me she wasn't really even trying. I didn't hear the, <laughs> I didn't hear the conversation, but whatever they're talking about, she didn't really try. I just wanted to, I'm, that's it. I know, I'm so nervous. <laughs> this is, this is not, you no. You did good, I'm proud no, of you. No. I'm proud of you, you did good. I know I did. <laughs> I'm happy that the sun came out and now we're gonna go on Jurassic World and I could use my poncho. Somehow we ended up in the front row. But we have ponchos so we'll be okay. When he was in J Japan, he went on the Jurassic Park ride and his glasses flew off. Yeah, I'm going through a little, I'm having flashbacks. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, how's your poncho on that? <laughs> We'll also hold on to our glasses extra tight so we don't fall asleep. Let's do it. In the age of the dinosaurs, a vast ocean was home to an explosion of life. At the top of the food chain sat the Mosasaurus, apex predator of the deep. You are clear for entry. Don't sit on the end on the front row if you want to get wet. I mean, if you don't want to get wet. 
Now we're gonna go see Waterworld, and I love that we get VIP seating. There's a very good chance that you're going to get wet. Life can be pretty crazy on this atoll. We have no ordinary adventures here. <laughs> so if you are in a green seat and do not want to get wet, now's a good time to move. If you're in a silver seat, directly behind a green seat, we just ran out of green paint. Water, right here. That water has a tendency to travel this way. So I need you to be prepared, because like I said, we don't always know where the water's going to go. This is pure dirt. How'd you come by this? I've been to dry land. Dry land is a myth. It's not a myth. I've been there. It's our salvation. We can all start new lives on dry land, but we have to hurry. The deacon and his smokers are after me. Smokers in the distance! Battle stations! Helen, oh, get to the tower. Get on that water cannon. Kids got my golf ball. No, it's okay. <laughs> we might actually need these people. What you got up there? We got an A-Toller! And he's got dirt! Drop him! No! Could no! you excuse me for just a moment? Shoot him, Chuck! No! Shoot him! And get that gun! Waterworld is always an awesome show, but it's even better from the VIP seats, which are like perfectly in the center. Yeah, and you just show up, and they have a reserved section for you. Yeah. And we didn't even get wet because we weren't in the splash zone. I love it. That it, show is like a must-do when you come to Universal. And we got the original Deacon. He's been the Deacon since the first show ever. Crazy. Yeah. We spent the rest of the day going on all the rides at Universal Studios Hollywood, and after the VIP tour ends, you can actually use your pass as a Universal Express unlimited pass. Yeah, so if you wanted, once the tour is over, you could just ride Mario Kart over and over and over again, which is like pretty crazy. Yeah, so let's go over this, what this includes. You get the continental breakfast when you check in. You get the guided VIP tour of the back lot, which is incredible, and you get to walk around the back lot. You get that, that lunch, yeah. which is a gourmet lunch. You get complimentary waters, complimentary drinks as well throughout the day. And then you get that Express Unlimited Pass after the tour is over. And then also there's a concierge service where they'll help you book dinner reservations at City Walk. And if it's at one of the universal places, it'll include a free appetizer or dessert of their choosing. And you get complimentary valet parking as well. Yes. So you're probably wondering how much does this cost? And the, the answer is a little complicated. It starts at $365 and it can run up to like 500-ish depending on how busy the day is yeah but if you compare that to Disney and their tour for a group cost it starts at like six seven thousand 
And they don't feed you. They don't feed you. <laughs> they don't, yeah. I, I think you get a lot more value here. Yeah. If you're thinking about getting the Express Pass anyway, and you're going to pay for a park ticket and the Express Pass, depending on the day and if it's in your budget, I would just spend the extra money and do the VIP tour because you're getting Express Pass with that and free food. Yeah. And I feel like the best part for me was the guided backlot tour. Like that alone is worth it because you don't get to do that normally. If you want to see the video from the last time I did the VIP tour without Kitra, it was a little bit different. <laughs> we'll put the video right over there. We want to say thank you to some of our Patreons that includes. Priscilla, MK, David, and Josh and Kareem. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching guys. We'll, we'll see, see you on, on the, the next, next adventure. adventure.